Hello, everybody. This is Peter Cooper from the NCBI, and just want to welcome you to today's webinar on NCBI datasets. Uh, Eric Cox is also here, who is uh, one of the technical people from datasets as well, and he can help answer some of those questions. But uh, I'll pass it over to Nuala now. Thanks, Peter. Today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a new resource at NCBI called NCBI Datasets. And it's uh, a new resource for uh, making it easier to access uh, sequence data at NCBI. And today I'm going to go through accessing data for genomes and genes. So just to give you an overview of the presentation, I'll first describe what is NCBI datasets since it's a new product. And then I'll go over um, what type of data you can find in datasets. And then I'll go into detail about how you can get two to two of these datasets, the genomes dataset and a genes dataset. And I'll describe what those data sets are composed of and um, also how you access that data. We offer different methods for accessing genome and gene data. We have web interfaces and we also have command line tools. So I'll spend some time describing the data sets and the interfaces through this PowerPoint slide. And then I'll do a, a live demo of both our web interface and our command line tool. So first, what is Datasets? Datasets is a new resource. It's aimed at making it easier for users to find NCBI sequence data. And to do this, we are developing new web and programmatic interfaces. Um, we are not a database ourselves. We're just a, a group that is making it easier for people to find data that is in NCBI. We're a new um, project. And so we are, uh, we are limited right now to data um, for genomes and for genes. And we have a special SARS-CoV-2 data set. And I want to make a point that we are uh, a project that's in very active development. So if for anyone that has been using data sets, you'll notice that we do make changes on a pretty regular basis. And um, we make these changes based on feedback from our users. So we love to hear from you and we love to hear what works, what doesn't work, and what you would like to see data sets do in the future. Please, please contact us if you have any you know, issues or questions. So the first data set I'm going to talk about is our genome data set. And um, what sort of distinguishes data set from other ways of retrieving data at NCBI is that we deliver data in, as a package. So for a genome data set, this seems like a very simple request. This uh, user may come in and want the human genome. But the human genome is actually a complex package of different data types. It consists of the genome FASTA sequence. That's the FASTA sequence for the chromosomes, as well as those unlocalized and unplaced uh, sequences, sequences that have not been placed with a, with a um, particular chromosome or um, are, are placed on a chromosome. So we, it also includes the organelle, so mitochondrial sequences. Um, so that's the genome sequence. And then there's also the express genome. There's the transcript FASTA sequences. There's the protein sequences. And then there's also metadata that goes along with that, um, describing um, the source material for the, for the particular genome and all the other attributes that go along with that package. And then there's also the annotation files. So users want annotation files in different formats. There can be GFS3 format, there can be GTF format, and GBSF format. So what's one thing the data sets is doing is that a user can come in and ask for something simple like human genome, and they can get options to, uh, to download a package of data that includes all these diverse data types. And right now you can get assembled genomes for um, all uh, domains of life in, through data sets, so eukaryotes, bacteria, and, and viruses. So how do you, exactly do you get this data? Through a web interface, we make it very easy. You go to the data sets homepage and you can just type in human genome, or you can type in also primates, you can go up the tree. And you'll get a box that appears and it tells you what the reference genome is and there's a button down here that says browse genomes and if you click that browse genomes button it'll take you to what we call our genome page and on that page there is a table and the table will give you all the genomes for that requested organism so this is showing all the human genomes that are available with the reference genome um, sorted to the top you select the genome that you want and then you hit the download button and you have choices of the files types that you want, and you can just download the data that you need. Once you've downloaded the data, you'll see that it is packaged as a um, archive, as a zip archive. Um, it's called NCBI Datasets by default, but you actually have options to name the, the file, whatever you like. Um, and within that file there, within that zip archive, there are uh, all the files that I just described. So you'll see a hierarchy of um, sequence and annotation um, and transfer protein files. And I want to point out next that there's two files, um, the metadata files that are within this genome package. We have um, some data packages will have just one metadata file, some will have more than one. 
um, and these metadata files are in JSON lines format, which is a good format for bioinformatic workflows, but it's not necessarily a format that is human readable. So um, this is the best way that of us, we've considered this the best way to represent the metadata in its hierarchical format. It's a, it's, um, a good way to organize the data. But we uh, know that users want, often want this data into tabular format. So datasets actually provides a command line tool where you can take this JSON lines report and you can convert that into a TSC or Excel file, picking and choosing the data, the fields, metadata fields that you need. So I will go over how you do this um, in, later in the talk. So uh, I mentioned that we have command line tools. Datasets actually have two command line tools. The first one is datasets, and that's for querying and downloading sequence of metadata. We also have a data format tool, and that's for converting that JSON line uh, file into, um, into TSD or Excel. Our tools are available for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. So what is our command line for downloading genomes? If you could use our data sets tool that I just mentioned, and it provides options to download the data set by taxon name, by assembly accession, or by bioproject ID. So our goal is to make things very easy. So our commands are pretty straightforward. It's just data sets, download genome is the command, and then you can do accession. I'll give you the NCBI assembly accession. You can use a taxon name, and that could be a common name, or it can be the scientific name. And again, you can also enter a bioproject ID, and that will um, download a default package of data. You also have um, options to exclude or include um, different files, and I'll go over that a little bit later. For our data format tool, again, you um, can choose data format, and you can choose TSV or Excel, and you can take that, that metadata file that you downloaded and, and convert that into uh, a, to a tabular output. So that was our genome package. We, I mean, yes, our genome package. We also have a gene package. So a gene includes all organisms with genes annotated by the RefSeq project. Um, and the gene package includes the most current curated gene sets. So RefSeq genes are curated on a daily basis. And so uh, for a genome data set, if you download the, the gene annotation or transcript, you'll get the snapshot of that particular annotation run. This gene package will give you access to gene, the most current annotation of any gene in the RefSeq collection. So the package includes uh, the gene FASTA sequence, it includes the transcript sequence, includes the protein sequence, and again, also a metadata file in JSON lines format. We also include in the gene package a TSV file, which has a, a selected um, number of metadata fields that you can just directly download as a table. So like the genome um, data set, we also make it very easy to get these gene data sets. You just go to the data sets homepage, or you can start from the NCBA homepage, type in human BRCA1. Again, you'll get a box that appears, uh, gives you information on, on BRCA1, and then you have a box on the side that says view full table. If you click on that, you'll get to this table that shows you all the transcripts for that particular gene, um, and you have options to select different data columns. You can select, uh, all of the transcripts or individual ones, and you have an option to download a tabular view, or you can download the, uh, the data set that includes all the sequence and metadata files. So for genes, we also have our command line tool. And again, we make it very simple. Say data sets, download gene, and you can do that by gene ID. You can do that by gene symbol, BRCA1, and then you can include the taxon group that you're interested in. You can also download by um, RefSeq accession. So the NM or NP, so the transcript and protein accession. Or you can download the entire gene data set for any particular taxon group. So we can do to gene, taxon, human, and that will give you all the genes, all the RefSeq genes for uh, humans. So lastly, I'm just gonna end this part of the talk with um, encouraging you to go look at our documentation. We have very extensive documentation that shows you um, some quick starts, it shows you how to download the command line tool, has some how-to guides for carrying out some basic workflows. Um, it also has a, 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 a metadata schemas documented and the description of all these data packages that I've described. And um, it also has uh, a, our public API documented there. And you can, if, if that's what you're interested, you can see that. So now I'm gonna go out of um, uh, presentation mode for PowerPoint, and I'm gonna switch over to a web interface and to show you the data sets homepage. So this is the data sets homepage. You can find it at NCBI slash data sets. 
and the home page itself will give you information on what's new so today it's the webinar and um, it has three sections genomes genes and virus um, and lastly our command line tools so just to show you how we you would go and get um, human genome I'll type in human and press return you don't even have to have the word genome i mean and just you'll get that box that i described you can go directly over to the reference genome or you can click browse genomes here if you click browse genomes it brings you over to our genome table and it lists all the genomes that are available for humans so there's right currently there's 892 genomes if you're interested in just the reference genome you can click here and click download and you'll get all the options for those files that I described. You can put in your own name for the genome. You don't. Have, it'll default to NCBI dataset. You have the option to put in your own name. So that's a straight download. You also have other options. You can filter. So you could filter to just the reference genome. You could filter to just those genomes that are annotated. So for human, that is GRCH38 and GRCH37. You can get to the to the table that's just including those ones that are annotated. You can also filter by assembly level. So if you want those that are just at chromosome level, you can filter the set down by that. And you can also filter by date if you want to see what's available, what's current genomes available. We also have a text filter that filters by assembly name um, or uh, by the submitter. So for example, if I wanted to see the new T to T assembly, I could enter that there and it would filter the list that I'm looking at. To just that one assembly. So other options that you have in this table is you can go to the actions button. The actions here allow you to do several things. You can view assembly details. So if you want to know all the information about that assembly, uh, that assembly you can go over to the, um, the assembly page the, and you can also go to blast the assembly. And we have a new blast page. And this blast page for each assembly in each row will give you options for the genome or just the transcripts. Or if you're looking at BLAST-P, you can get just the proteins that are for that particular assembly annotation. So each, these, the, but the actions here are specific to the assembly in that row. You can also go over to our genome data viewer, um, which will allow you to browse the genome in a graphical format. And there's lots of functionality there, and we have other tutorials that describe how to use this viewer if you're interested. And then we also have an option where you can just, again, get that download widget that will allow you to just uh, download the information for that assembly. So you can also multi-select if you want to get more than one assembly, and then you can use the button up here, and that will allow you to, um, to get download data for multiple assemblies. We also allow you to select columns. So you can select different data types. You can add contigen 50. We recently added BUSCO scores. You can get you know, species name if that was important to you or by a project and by a sample. And you can add those columns. And if you, uh, you have to scroll down a bit and use this, this bar to scroll across and see the data for those additional columns. So if there's any data in this table that you would like to see that you don't see now, um, please let us know we are very interested to know what um, what users are looking for um, in, in these sort of default columns and if there's something that you think is missing please let us know so if you want to switch to a different organism or somewhere higher up the tree you could type in primate here so we allow you we have an auto suggest so you can just start typing in a common name or a scientific name and then you can select that from the auto select and again you see there's 1039 genomes for primates and again, once you're there, you can search for just, just the reference ones if that's what you're interested in. So we have data for, for all organisms. So you can also type in something like Vibrio. And there, you can get the 15,000 genomes that we have for Vibrio. So the next thing I'm going to demo is our gene table. So you can just go back to, you can use the search bar here, or you can go back to the landing page. And you can type in human BRCA1. And here you'll get uh, a box again that describes that information on that particular gene from human. If you go to the full table, you can come over here. 
and you'll see uh, all the transcripts that are available for BRCA1. And again, you can select everything. You can go to download. There's an option to download a table in TSV or CSV format. You can name the file whatever you like. You also have the option to download the data set. So that would include the transcript and protein sequences and the metadata files that I described earlier. So this is, a, we actually have two views in this table. This is the transcript view. Um, and the transcript view allows you to select columns that are related to the transcript. So you can select um, ensemble IDs or um, isoform names, things that apply to uh, at the transcript level. If you switch to the gene view, you can select columns that are more at the gene level. So you can select ensemble ID or OMIM ID, apply those, and you'll have additional columns for, uh, for those that selected data. And again, you can select, there's just one here, but you can select many, um, go to download, and you'll get that gene data set, or you can download the table. If you want to add additional genes, you can go up to add genes. You can do this by gene ID, by gene symbol, by accession. For symbol, you have to enter the organism name. So I'm going to do an example here and add, and that will add to the table. So you can add multiple genes, you can add as many genes as you like, um, and you can also switch to the transcript view that will give you transcripts for both of the genes that you selected. And again, you have options to download multiple genes or just one gene. So, um, so the next thing I'm going to do is switch to um, our command line. So if you just bear with me for one second, I'm going to uh, switch over to a terminal and I can enter back. Okay, so starting from the terminal, I'm going to first show you how to download the data sets tool. So the first, as I mentioned, there's two tools. There's the data sets and data format. So here I'm going to enter the curl command for, for downloading the data sets tool. Enter curl. Download a second command. Enter this to make it executable. So that's for um, for data sets, we're going to do the same for data format. Okay. And so the data format um, curl command, and again, make it executable. Okay, so now we're ready to start using the command line. Uh, and all these instructions are available in our documentation. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to download the human reference genome. So again, the data sets, download genome, simple taxon human. I'm using the flag reference that so will get just the reference genome, and I'm going to name it human. So go ahead and download it. The download should be fairly fast. It should um, take about a minute. And um, it, the default download will include sequence, uh, it will include the genomic and transcript and protein sequence. And it will also include um, the two metadata files and um, the GFF3 file. So that should be the default package. And if, after we run this, I will show you how you can use flags to, um, to exclude or include different files into your human genome data package. So now we're done. Um, now that the file is done, the first thing I'm going to show you is um, how to use that data format tool to create a table of a few data fields. So I'm going to paste in this, uh, this command. So it's data format. We're going to look. We're going to convert it to TSV. Um, it's the, gen the genome package. Um, this package flag will allow you to. Well, will will access the uh, metadata files directly from the download the download zip file. So you don't have to unzip it first. And then I am right here. I'm using the fields uh, flag to indicate a few fields. So just press that. And what the output is um, the field names and then the values that are in the field. So if you downloaded, here I'm just downloading a single genome, but if you downloaded many genomes, you could, um, you could create a table that would give you this, this data for a, for a set of genomes. You can, if you don't want to define the fields, you just want to use a default set of fields um, and convert it, you can just do, just use the package flag and your file, and this is not a, very pretty output, but it gives you a default set of fields that are available in that um, genome package. So let me just click this and make this easier to look at. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is unzip the file. So I'm going to use unzip, unzip, and yeah, start to see the files um, 
unzipping. And what you can see here is that for the human genome package, you're going to see a different file for each chromosome FASTA sequence, and they're going to start to load. Um, we also see the data report that I mentioned, the assembly data report. Um, so it's going to continue to load, and at the end, you should start to see the um, the transcript, and there's the GFS file. And I believe the transcript and protein files uh, are here now. Okay, so that's all the files that are um, part of the genome, the default genome data set. There's also a catalog that describes the, the different file types. Okay, so next, that's our genome package. The next thing I want to show you is if you're interested in figuring out what the flags are, you can just do um, a flash data download genome H. And so our health documentation um, is, is lengthy, but it shows you example commands. It um, gives you information on all the flags that are available, and it tells you what those flags mean and how you can exclude or include um, different file types. It also shows you how to limit your download to just reference or to just um, data that's been released after a certain certain time. So I encourage you to explore documentation and, and learn more about these flags or contact us if you have any questions about it. So the next step I'm going to show is a gene download. And and this is, uh, I'm going to download three human genes. So it's data that's download gene. I'm going to download them by symbol. And I'm indicating that the taxon group that I want is human. And I list those three gene symbols. And I'm giving it a file name. So the gene download is a smaller package, so it's, it's pretty quick. Again, I'm going to show you how to use data format. So if you want to pull out uh, a few fields from that metadata file, you're going to enter this uh, command. And it's going to get you that package flag and indicate your file and the fields that you want. And here I'm just getting gene ID, symbol, oh, and sorry, I think I have a, an, an ensemble ID. Sorry, there's an issue with it. I'll try next to uh, demo getting the default package. Um, so let's see. There's a, if you use that package flag, what you're going to get is the default package of all the fields. Uh, that's how you, how you can get all the, the fields that you will in the default package. If you want to know what fields are available, you can do data format, CSV, gene, and that will give you here is a list of all of the field types that are available. Up here is the default fields that are available using the package flag. And then these are all the fields that you can you can specifically request using the fields flag. And the last thing I'm going to show you here is how to unzip this file. So unzip. And again, you see the data set includes gene fast day, uh, transfer fast day, protein fast day, the report, um, the table that I mentioned that has some default metadata fields, and the catalog. So that uh, is the end of my command line demo. Um, I will go back to my PowerPoint slides and show you um, here we have links to the data sets web pages that I described in this presentation. I also have listed the command line examples that I showed. Please give them a try. And if there's issues you find or um, things that you would like to see there that you don't see, please definitely contact us, um, contact me, um, and uh, we would love to hear from you. We are really focused on user feedback, so we want to hear um, hear what, what works for you, what doesn't, and, and what we can improve. And lastly, I'll just thank my team, and I'll take any questions that are available. Hey, Nola, you also wanted to ask him a, a you had a, a thanks for that presentation, but you mm -hmm. wanted to ask a poll. Do you want to do that now? We can do that. Sure. Uh, I uh, I read one thing we're very interested in is how people would like to use metadata. So I yeah, it'd be great to take a poll now and see um, okay. what type of metadata formats you prefer to use. Okay, so I'm going to launch a poll and it's mm -hmm. going to ask you what type of metadata do you prefer, and you can pick the format, uh, and then we'll give it a minute or so to let people vote. Okay. So it looks like a, a spread of this. Um, 
sort of the, the two most common answers are Excel and uh, CSV. CSV is kind of in the same ballpark. JSON is less popular. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Okay. Thank you. That's that's really helpful. Um, yeah, and I think that's something that we are um, we're actively working on and how to make. Um, you know, we feel that JSON, JSON lines is the best way to, to, to represent the data because data is getting, you know, increasingly hierarchical, but um, users need a way to, to format that data and to tabulate format. So um, please try the data format tool. Um, if it doesn't work for you, uh, we would like to hear from you. And um, we'd also like to know what other ways in which you um, would like to see, like to be able to access that data. If it's directly through the web interface, um, we can we can improve those options. Yeah, we have some questions in the. Um, so uh, there are a number of different things. Um, um, one of the things that I ran into uh, also, Nula, was about how to get the CDS mm -hmm. regions. And is that something that you're planning to add for everything, or has that already been added? Or because the only way that I was able to get them was um, the uh, ortho logs. Mm -hmm. Sorry, to get the uh, CDS. The CDS regions, CDS, like coding sequences. Oh, the CDS regions. The CDS. Yes, but no, I'm glad you asked that. That is something we're actually um, doing in, in right now. We're actively working on. So we are going to provide an option for um, users to download the sequence for just the CDS region or just the UTRs, if that's, if that's something you're interested in. It will probably be a flag in the um, in the command line to just restrict your FASTA sequence to, to CDS or to UTR. And then um, after that, we'll explore how we will offer that to people going through the web interface. Perhaps there'll be a down download option for that type of FASTA sequence. Great, thank you. And Eric answered a similar mm -hmm. question in the chat, which was about back, what, what things are supported in bacteria. And he said that gene synthesis mm -hmm. is currently supported uh, for bacteria. And that and again, they were going to add the uh, CDS regions. Yeah, that's correct. Another question has to do with, you know, what we downloaded we worked with the current reference assembly of human is there a mm -hmm. way i mean that's what you get by default is there a way to specify a different reference suppose you wanted to get the, the previous one um if you want so the there we only have one reference assembly per per species so if you if you want to get grch 37 um you can do that by the the best way would be um, by the assembly accession if you're using the command line Okay. Um, the other option is to to go to our our genome table. Um, it's sorted to the towards the top, so you'll see you'll clearly see the assembly name GRCH thirty seven, and you have the options to download that data set through through the web interface. In terms of you know thinking about what organisms are supported, so someone wanted to know like for mm -hmm. example what would how could I do the same thing for example with cat? Could you get the same kind of information that you got with the human genome? Yes. The same so you could type in, you could type in cat, and so oh, that's unfortunate. Where are you that's guys? <laughs> cat genome. <laughs> um, uh, let's, let's do. Let's use auto suggest. Let's cat. <laughs> um, you can use that. Uh, we have some conflict between gene symbols and organism names. Um, yeah. Doing our best to 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 fix that. <laughs> Or make that best experience, but yes, if you would go to CAT, you'll have see there's all the, all the six genomes that are available for CAT. Um, again, you can go to the actions menu and you'll see options to blast the assembly, the data viewer, and to download. So also, there's a question about the, uh, which I have certainly had been mystified by over the years at NCBI. Is we we seem to have some various opinions about what the 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 file type is going to be for different kinds of sequence uh, formats, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So he has a question about .fna, which normally to me means FASTA nucleic acid, and he wants to know if that's mm -hmm. .fasta. And I don't know which what ending we use on David sets when you download things. We use .fna, and yeah, that's, that's the nucleotide FASTA sequence. And so we're using F, we're using the convention of FAA for protein FASTA if we were to get that. And FAA for protein, correct. Is there a general um, contact email for data sets, or would we want to use the um, info? I, I, the, we have this feedback button on all of our web interface pages. Um, I definitely encourage use of that. You can just use the info um, at NCBI. Uh, uh, the help, help desk just indicate you're asking a question about data sets, and it will 
um, work its way up to us. Um, you can also write to me directly at olarynna at ncvi.nlm.nih.gov. Um, I'm a you know, direct owner of the product and I'm happy to help anyone if they want to contact me directly. Um, so we have many ways to, to reach us, but um, we read that feedback button every day. It's not, a, not one of these bottomless bits. We actually look at it and please include your email. That's very important so we can get back to you. And we are very, very interested in your feedback. Okay, a uh, couple of more things. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of help documentation. Somebody wanted to have some suggestions about where to go for help and read more about this topic. Mm -hmm. so, if you maybe just so if you are on our, our uh, any of our pages, you'll see this menu button at the top. If you select that, you can find uh, information on quick starts and command lines. So if I go in there, we'll get into what is our documentation. Our documentation has um, has these quick starts for the different services that we have. We also have some how-to guides for some common workflows, like we, we have a workflow for working with those JSON lines reports. So, you know, um, can, you know, go go through here to see suggestions for how, the best way to work with these reports. What our recommendations are. Um, you will also find a reference section that describes. If you go to the command line, it describes all the um, all the command line flags and filters, things that are available for all our different services. Um, you have, go back to, um, you also have um, documentation on our open API. Um, just as a, a way of warning, we are actually in the process of versioning our API. We're on V1 alpha, we call it, and uh, we're on our way to a different version. So um, this, just, just as I mentioned, we're in very active development. So um, if you come to this page, you'll probably see that there is a, a version two at some point, and we will be continuing to develop in that version two. Um, and I think that's, you know, I want to make that point about data sets in general, because we are developing so much, things do change. Um, people don't always like change, but um, we are basing these changes on feedback that we're hearing from users. So if you want to contribute to that, again, please contact us. Um, so yes, all our documentation is here. We have some information on using different programming languages to access the API, like Python and R, if that's, um, if that's what you want to work with. Um, and we are planning a webinar for September that will be focused more on programmatic access um, of data sets. So look, look for that if that's something you're interested in. Okay, another question related to your discussion of the, or your mention of the programming languages. Uh, is there mm -hmm. integration into Bioconductor? which is an R package, I believe. Annotation Hub, as you um, mentioned. Not that I am aware of. Uh, I will defer to Brad, maybe, if you uh, know much about Bioconductor. I, I'll be honest, I'm not that familiar with Bioconductor. Uh, I understand that's a, a part of our ecosystem, and we, we're working on our R package. We haven't found many people who want to use it that way yet, uh, but if people are interested, we'd love to talk to you find out what your workflow is like and make that possible. Okay, and then there's another question that I, I think I know the answer to, but it's just like ab, uh, transcript sequences for prokaryotes, NCBI doesn't really make transcript sequences for prokaryotes because the nature of prokaryotic transcription, so we don't mm -hmm. have that. Well, we make we make CDS files, so a CDS file is based on the, um, on the you know, the nucleotide sequence of the protein. So uh, we don't actually have that in our package right now, but it's something that we have, um, we're planning to include. Okay, I think that's, I think that's everything. Uh, thanks everybody for coming and thanks Nola for the presentation. And so I'll go ahead and- Thank you for this opportunity and I appreciate everybody coming. It's, um, uh, it's great to see so many people and I'm pleased, yes, send us some feedback.